to John chapter 7. We're finally out of 6. Boy, 6 was so many uh, <laughs> verses long. You know, 71 verses. But uh, we're in John chapter 7 here. We're going to read these first 9 verses now. <clears throat> so chapter 6, we've seen that feeding of the 5,000. We've seen the people's attitude. They were wanting to force Jesus to be king. Uh, they were just following around for his food. They found him the next day at Capernaum. Uh, they're still some, wanting some meat. They want some angel's food cake. They want to see what it tastes like. But Jesus said, no, 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 no. You guys ain't going to get nothing. And I'm the only way to heaven. you got to totally get me, and then you'll get heaven. And, of course, they didn't like it that he said uh, that his blood and his body was the only way to have eternal life. They hated him for that. Yeah. And so... Uh, Things are developing. <laughs> mm -hmm. And really, their hatred all stems from back in John chapter 5 mm -hmm. when that lame man that was impotent in his feet right. couldn't jump in the water fast enough to get healed when the angel would trouble the water. And because Jesus had healed him on the Sabbath day. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, the Jews are out to kill him. Because they think it's more important that he maintain their tradition. Uh, see, and this is why Jesus really was radically uh, establishing a new religion, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. See, we're not continuing Judaism like some people want you to believe that That's Jesus. Right. They want to talk about the Jewishness of Jesus. Well, again, this is what the words used in this text today in verse 1. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, he would not walk in jewelry. Right. There you go. See? Mm -hmm. I mean, he didn't wear jewelry. <laughs> it just meant that... <laughs> See, the Jews and their traditions. See, Jesus was the Hebrew of the Hebrews. Amen. Mm -hmm. And uh, because he wouldn't maintain these Jewish traditions of these religionists, this is why they're going to crucify him on the cross. So uh, let's stand out of respect to the Word of God. We'll read these first nine verses here. And uh, so John 7 and verse 1, After these things Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry because the Jews sought to kill him. Yes, right. Now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. Right. His brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence and go into Judea, that thy disciples also may see the works that thou doest. For there is no man that doeth anything in secret, and he himself seeketh to be known openly. If thou do these things, show thyself to the world. For neither did his brethren believe in him. Right. Then Jesus said unto them, my time is not yet come, but your time is always ready. The world cannot hate you, but me it hateth, because I testify of it, that the works are of our evil. Go ye up unto this feast. I go not up yet mm -hmm. unto this feast, for my time is not yet full come. When he had said these words unto them, he abode still in Galilee. Amen. Now let's pray, Lord, again, help us to see that uh, Jesus is the key and he's the only way to heaven. And help us to communicate this to our neighbors and friends. And in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. All right. So it's very interesting because, of course, the new versions of the Bible totally change these words and make Jesus into a liar. Right. The new versions uh, change these words to where Jesus is saying he's not going up to the feast. And so they want to make him into a liar because the Bible clearly says that later he went up. Mm -hmm. right. So the King James is the only honest Bible that says that he would not yet go up, mm -hmm. meaning he'd go up eventually. And of course, the next verse 10 there, that lets you know that yes, he went up, but as it were in secret. And that's always the best thing to do. If you know somebody's out to kill you, it's best to keep your distance from them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, even the Lord Jesus, see, he's no dummy. You know, 
If you know somebody's out to get kill you, stay away from them. Amen. It only makes sense. So we see these responses to this revelation of the Lord Jesus being the only way to heaven. We see the response of Jesus' own brothers, how that they're mocking him and they're in unbelief. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so John has done a good job of reminding us of this simple truth that we've talked about already, but we'll get into it a little more here. So we see the setting. Jesus was forced to withdraw in the ministry in Galilee. As you remember, you know, if this were a, a map of Israel, of course, you got the uh, Mediterranean Sea over here. Then up in the north is the Lake Genesaret or the Sea of Galilee. Then the river runs down the Jordan River. And you move from Galilee into Samaria, then Judea, and then there's the desert area where there's the big Dead Sea. And so, instead of going down there to Jerusalem into Judea, just south of Samaria, as the custom of the Jews, you know, they had to come three times a year to Jerusalem and bring a tithe, bring an offering. And so Jesus is going to stay up there. He's going to stay up there in Galilee and preach a little bit while they all come down. Then he'll come down a little later. And so this is what the Bible's telling us about. Because he knew they were out to kill him. After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry because the Jews sought to kill him. So he's going to stay away from them as much as he can. Because these religionists are only religionists. They're not truly the children of God. Amen. They believe in forcing people and killing people. And Jesus don't believe in killing nobody. Amen. So we Amen. see the setting. Jesus was forced to withdraw and to minister in Galilee. The reason is because these religionists were seeking his life. And since the Feast of Tabernacles was at hand, then of course all the Jews would going through some, as the Bible says in Leviticus 23, they should do. And of course, we can get excited about that, because wow, we know that Jesus' birthday was the Feast of Tabernacles, because the Bible says his name would be Emmanuel, God with us, God tabernacling in flesh, Mm -hmm. amen? And so I can't tell you what fun it was to speak to these people, at least 19 of them, in the room last night, and say, who knows when Jesus' birthday was? And then sure enough, our black friend Mickey hollered out, December 25th. And I said, well, December 25th is when he was conceived. The Bible tells us that Mary was indoors because it's cold in December around the 25th. And so she's indoors, and sure enough, an angel appeared to her and told her about that at nine months she was going to have a baby. And she said, how can these things be? See, I don't know how to man, you know. Right. And yet, sure enough, so I counted it off with them. See, there would be January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September. I said, it's normal for a lady to take nine months and have a baby, you know. And, of course, it makes a little sense to them. <laughs> so we know around the end of September, early October is when Jesus was born. And uh, and besides that, the Bible is perfectly clear. The Bible tells you there in Luke how that sure enough, uh, whenever Mary went to see her cousin Elizabeth, and how that sure enough, Elizabeth was going to have John the Baptist, but Mary was six months along. Because we know that but Jesus was born six months after John the Baptist. And so the Bible is perfectly clear in the book of Luke that we know when John the Baptist was born. Because again, his daddy was serving it during the course of Abiah. So of course we know that that was the end of March there. He would be born. So then if John the Baptist was born uh, in the in the March there, then you got April, May, June, July, August, September again. Again. Mm-hmm. How can you miss it? The Bible's perfectly clear when Jesus was born. Right. But there's a certain church that always says December 25th is what they celebrate. And that's something to celebrate. The fact that Mary's going to have a baby in nine months. <laughs> but they got it all backwards, don't they? <laughs> What a joy it was to tell the people. Because, boy, they sure didn't know that was coming. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
But here it is, we're in September. And in just a couple weeks, we will be celebrating Jesus' birthday again. Right. Jesus really was God, tabernacling in flesh. And like the Apostle Paul said, everything we do is according to the Scriptures. And Jesus, even in his birth, would be according to the scriptures. That's the gospel we preach. Amen? So we don't have to be bashful about it. In fact, they might appreciate learning something. And again, I can't tell you, I, there's this one Catholic gentleman, when he followed me all the way to Don's door when I took Don back to his room. Because he just said, I want to shake your hand and tell you, I appreciate you coming out here and talking to us and telling us these things. And I'm sure they've never heard it like this before. You know? So it's, 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 it's fun. It's great. Yeah. You know. And they seem to be receiving it so far. And so that's a blessing. So it's the Feast of Tabernacles. It would be Jesus' birthday. And I reminded them how, see, John, when he would turn 30, then finally he could go out and start preaching and he'd say, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Then he pointed to Jesus, behold, the Lamb of God was taken away the sin of the world. Then sure enough, six months later on Jesus' birthday, he could baptize Jesus now. And Jesus would begin his ministry because Jesus would have turned 30 also. Amen. But he would only preach three and a half Amen. years and then they'll crucify him. Verse 3. His brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence, go into Judea, that thy disciples also may see the works that thou doest. For there is no man that doeth anything in secret, and he himself seeketh to be known openly. If thou do these things, show thyself to the world. Can you see the snide, smart aleck looks on their faces as his brothers are telling him, yeah. Oh, go right ahead, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> For neither did his brethren believe in him. The Bible makes it perfectly clear that his own brothers and sisters did not believe in him yep. until after he would be raised from the dead. Right. And of course, it would be tough because how would you like it if you had an older brother that always had to tell the truth? And when Mary would come in the room and she'd ask Jesus, you know, who'd been doing what or who didn't pick up the room, Jesus had to always tell the truth. You know, they had to hate him. Little Mr. Goody Two Shoes, you know, he could do nothing wrong. And he was always obedient. It had to be miserable. And yet, where does the Bible tell us the names of his brothers and sisters again? Mark. 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 <laughs> chapter 6. Amen. So let's go back over there and look at that. Mark chapter 6. Now here's Jesus in his own town of Nazareth. He goes in there and takes the Bible and reads them the Bible in the synagogue there. And the people, his neighbors, are all astonished. Yep. Verse 3, is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary? They said, we know who you are, Jesus. What are you doing sitting here trying to teach us the Bible? You didn't go off to India and go to some Swami Bible school or nowhere, like the modern idiots trying to teach. That's why they totally know this is unbelievable. Who does this guy think he is? He's just a carpenter. He's not been to the rabbinical schools. He doesn't understand all of our traditions and why we do them. Mm -hmm. He may be a Jew, but he's a renegade Jew. Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James? Jesus had a brother named James. And Joseph. If the daddy's name is Joseph, you know somebody's going to be a little Joseph. Somebody's going to be a little Joseph Jr. Mm -hmm. James and Joseph and of Judah. He had a little brother named Judas and Simon. So Jesus had four brothers, and the Bible here clearly names for us the four brothers that Jesus had because Mary and Joseph had more children. In Matthew 1, the Bible says that Jesus was Mary's firstborn, meaning she had more born later. <laughs> And so we get to see that Jesus not only had four brothers and are not his sisters here with us. Again, the Bible does not say he had a sister. That would only be one. And neither does it say both sisters, like Lazarus had, Mary and Martha. No. And are not his sisters. Meaning he had at least three. He could have had more. So we're saying... 
that Jesus had at least seven siblings, okay? And if you count Jesus as the oldest boy in the family, wow, <coughs> Joseph and Mary had to take care of eight kids. Eight kids. <laughs> I mean, here's a family of ten. And you think you got it rough. Okay. Most of us don't think of Jesus like this. The Catholics do such a good job of brainwashing us to think the Holy Family is just uh, Mary and Joseph and Jesus. And that she, made, she, she stayed a perpetual virgin. Well, again, the Bible sure don't teach nothing stupid like that. <laughs> but you got a bunch of suckers who believe it. Because they don't read their Bible. Mm -hmm. That's right. And what's fun is you can take a Catholic and open his Catholic Bible and show him this, and it radically messes with them. And I've had many of them get saved, amen, because of that. Because mm -hmm. they realize, wow, my church has lied to me, amen, brother. It's still lying, too. Mm -hmm. So, again, we see the mockery of his own brothers. Come on, Jesus, go ahead, do the miracles. Go out there and show everybody. <laughs> like Jesus is stupid enough to fall for that. Mm -hmm. So they'll kill him quicker, you know, yeah. because they're in unbelief. They're a bunch of bozos. But finally, the book of Acts tells us that yes, after he raises from the dead, then finally, of course, they're going to be there praying and helping. <coughs> and, and even they're going to help Mary. At one point, Mary's even going to say, oh, Jesus, you're not going to get crucified. Just, just cool down. People are going to think you're crazy talking like that all the time. And even Jesus has to say, who is my mother and my brother? She says, it's yeah. to do the will of the Father. Jesus kind of says, don't be telling me my mama wants me. What do you think I'm doing? It's like when he was 12 when he told Mary and Joseph, I got to be about my father's business, amen? Mm -hmm. Woman, what have I to do with thee? You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's fascinating. And sure enough, of all of his brothers, we believe that probably the book of James in your Bible and the book of Jude were written by Jesus' brothers. Mm -hmm. That actually in the early church, they actually came to some prominence in preaching the gospel. And boy, what it had to be for them to preach. Because when they could preach, they could say, you know, I remember one time we were sitting around a table eating some fish and Jesus said, pass the salt. And mm -hmm. Simon uh, uh, pulled Rebecca's hair, you know. <laughs> this, that, and the other. That's why the Bible speaks of how there's knowledge, but there'd come a point that it would pass away. Because when the apostles were gone now, mm -hmm. see, yeah. And even Jesus' brothers and sisters had died all, all died out. Now there was things that they could tell you that was gone. Mm -hmm. Run. So it's interesting. So we saw the setting. Jesus was forced to withdraw and to minister in Galilee. The brothers' response, mocking him with unbelief, trying to say, Go on up for her. Come on, we'll take you. You can ride with me. <laughs> oh no, that's all right, guys. And then thirdly, we see Jesus' reply, amen. It's not time. This is not the day for his acclaim. But it is the time of man's acclaim, amen. My time has not yet come, but your time is always ready. The world cannot hate you, but me it hated. See, the world can identify with you as a sinner, because they're all sinners, too. And they know you're a sinner. I, I'll never forget the time a cop was asking me if I had anything illegal in the car. I said, no, well, of course not. He says, well, I'm not going to ask you if you've ever done anything wrong. He says, because we all do something wrong at some time. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, I was happy to see that the cop acknowledged that truth, that we're all sinners and we live in a sin-cursed world. Mm -hmm. And even at your very best, you can accidentally slip and make a mistake. And that's why nine times out of ten, we're driving and we're always looking on the defense, but we're mostly looking for a cop. <laughs> <laughs> We want to make a mistake. We want to make it honestly. We want to, we don't want him to catch it for us. Because <laughs> right. right. believe me, some of us have been there. <laughs> so Jesus said unto them, "My time is not yet come, but your time is always ready. The world cannot hate you, but me it hateth because I testify of it that the works are of our evil." Jesus being around just reminded everybody, "Uh oh." See, he can't do nothing wrong. And yet they're going to take him and crucify him as if he was a sinner. Because he didn't deserve a bit of it. Because, of course, he'd never done anything wrong. He'd never broken the law. Mm -hmm. 
and yet he'd allow them to crucify him and hang him out there naked because he's dying for you, he's dying for me, he's taking our hell so that we won't have to go to hell. And so that's what a wonderful Savior he is. But again, there's two kinds of men in that jail tonight, today. There's bad men, and then there's some good men. <laughs> bad men put them in jail because they don't know what to do with them. And every now and then we know somebody even on death row is totally innocent. Praise God when they get off. Because some bad men, some corrupt prosecutors and cops, and, you know, hiding evidence, trying to make the case go away quick. So there's two kind of men in that jail, good men and bad men. The world don't know what to do with a good man. <laughs> that good man is a, a thorn in the side of the bad man. And so he'll get put in there with all them other bad men, just hoping to corrupt him. Even. And uh, so we understand that. If it's true of Jesus, it can be true of you, my friend. So that's why it pays to know a little bit about the law, amen. And it's time for the world's works to be proclaimed evil. Evil, because they're evil. Yeah. And boy, if that ain't true today, what is it? Yes, sir. Like, as already been mentioned, this dear little lady down there in Kentucky trying to stand up for God's truth. Right. And praise, yes. the, praise the Lord. And again, see, again, sure, they're trying to ramrod their new laws down our throats. The truth is there's an old America, constitutional America, that's still back there. And believe me, most of the judge knows it, too. They, they know it, too, and they'll respect that old law, too. They like to see it when a citizen finally knows the law enough to stand up for truth. Because mm -hmm. it's called the law of the lesser magistrate. There's no common law of truth. That when the higher courts rule something one way, it's up to the lesser magistrate to stand up for the truth and stand with the people for the law. So that's why this lady in the long end of it, she's not going to suffer too much. Right. You know, it can look sad and troubling. But the truth is, there's more law on her side than this than this against her. Right. Because you know, the only ruling against her is this little two-bit law, these two-bit Supreme Court black robe uh, opinionated judges gave their opinion. <laughs> and uh, they're wanting that reinforced. But again, she's been voted in by the people. Right. Right. The Supreme Court's never been voted in by no people. Well, can you get that your head? That's right. What's more powerful? This little woman. Is all the people voted put her in office, or some Supreme Court clown that some clown president put in office? Right. Yeah. Well, of course, the representative of the people has more power right. than some clown appointed to his job. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's why the Constitution honors people that are elected in office. The highest office mm -hmm. in our in our county is the sheriff. Mm -hmm. We elect the sheriff. Not some two-bit FBI agent, some two-bit agency in Washington sends down here to tell us what to do. Right. Amen. The highest office holder in our county is our sheriff that we elected to be our sheriff. He's our representative. We pay him to go around at night and check the doors and locks, make sure there's no bad men out there. So see, the, thank God our forefathers, they set up this country right. Now, just because they want to shove this new baloney communism down our throat, don't mean we got a job. This dear lady, God bless her. God increase her tribe. <laughs> See, this is what they fear more than anything else. That other people take a stand too. Right. See, they could bring things to a head real quick if they don't want to happen. Yes. So let's keep praying for her. Let's stand with her as much as we can. Amen. 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 Jesus is right on. When you stand for truth in the midst of all that evil wickedness, man, they ain't going to like you. They're going to want to get rid of you. Right. you be sure there's right. people and then look at the reaction. Charity was telling us how that even... Uh, her husband's sister, oh man, it's on Facebook. That, oh man, they hate this woman. They hate this woman. That's right. These, uh, That's these, sure. these liberal communist crazies, man, they hate this woman. She's got to obey the law. You know, you wish you knew what the law was. Right, right. Boy, and it, you got to pity these poor people. They got college educations in the dumbest coal buckets. Yeah. <laughs> The world cannot hate you, but me it hates because I testify of it that the works are over evil. When the Supreme Court said that queers can marry queers, that's evil. That's right. That's right. That's right. Marriage has always been what the Bible says marriage is, because it's God who made marriage. That's right. Not some Supreme Court clown man dressed like a woman with a black robe on. Mm -hmm. Mm 
Amen. Go ye up unto this feast. I go not up yet. Very important we get that. Amen. Yet. See, that's what Jesus truly did say. Not like the new versions of the Bible say. See, the new versions take the Bible translating very lightly. And so they just slop. That's why I call it slop jar version. Or like my buddy called them the funny book Bibles. Because it's like reading a funny book. It's so funny. It's just sweet. I think that they change that and uh, they omit the word yet implying that the Lord lied because he did not go to the feast and the Lord did not say that he wasn't going up to the feast he was going later that's the point he made in verse 8 right. go ye up unto this feast I go not up unto this feast is what the new versions say they leave that little word yet out mm -hmm. you see For my time is not yet full come. When he had said these things unto them, he bowed still in Galilee. So he's going to stay in Galilee, continue to minister by his lonesome, let them all go on down, and he'll slip on down there later. And that shows you that, again, number one, Jesus knew he was on a divine time schedule. Mm -hmm. and he was going to let no one rush him. Mm -hmm. It's so good that you know what you should do and what you shouldn't do. And when people start pushing you and stressing you out, back off, don't get stressed. Know that... Uh -oh. <laughs> don't get stressed now. Know that you're on a divine time schedule and you're going to make that schedule, amen? And take it one step at a time. <laughs> the Lord wants you to do Amen. <laughs> Timing is everything. Yes. <laughs> Timing is everything. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And it said these words unto them, he abode still in Galilee. Verse 10. But when his brethren were gone up, then went he also up unto the feast. Not openly, but as it were in secret. Amen. It's wisdom. Amen. It's not evil. It's wisdom to know when to be in the open and when to be not so open. Amen. There's two ways to evangelize, openly and secretly, on the sly and openly, directly and indirectly. There's two ways. You can't say one against the other, but it takes wisdom to know when you should be more open, when you should be more discreet. Even Lord Jesus, as a beautiful example there, would go up, but later, without the fanfare. It's not always right to desire center stage, fanfare. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yet some people, like some people, make soul winning their touchstone, and it justifies their new versions, or their new yeah. gospel, their new music, and all the crap they do. Others, I sprint free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what? <laughs> so what? It takes both boys. It's right. real direct and indirect. Yes. So the guy can get so puffed up with his pride, man. Amen. Let's all stand by our heads in prayer. Lord, again, we'll thank you.